In this video, we'll be looking at transmission gratings, intensity of light in various cases, white light when it moves through a transmission grating, and also a little bit on spectroscopy. So a diffraction grating is effectively a large number of slits that are right next to each other, equally spaced, and it's usually created by putting scratches in a material. And when light passes through a diffraction grating, it diffracts and behaves as a wave. The effect of this is that each slit is a light source, when the light is incident on a screen, interference occurs between all the light sources. Now, as with the double slit experiment, when the light is incident on the screen, interference occurs and there are areas of maximum intensity of light where the path difference is a multiple integer of the wavelength and that's where you get the bright light. There are other areas on the screen where there is no light where destructive interference occurs. When looking at multiple light sources through a diffraction grating, we assume that the screen is a long way away compared to the separation distance between the slits. This means that the light from the sources is parallel and travels an equal distance to the screen. So at this point the waves reinforce and produce constructive interference producing a bright spot at the central maximum. Now as the light diffracts through the grating, the angle that it hits the screen is, is becomes larger. And using our equation for diffraction gratings, the largest angle that it can occur is 90 degrees. Any more than the light will be traveling behind the diffraction grating, which doesn't make sense. So the largest angle that we can see in front of the diffraction grating would be 90 degrees. At 90 degrees, sine of 90 is one, which means for a certain wavelength and a certain separation between the slits, there's a limit on to how many maximum that we can see. And this is given by the equation on the screen. So the amount of maximum that we can see is the separation between the slits divided by the wavelength of the light. Now when looking at these questions, it's important to remember when we calculate the maximum number of maxima that we can see, we have to look at the symmetrical case where it's the same on both sides and also add the central maximum. So now let's look at a diffraction grating and try to explain how it looks different to the double slit scenario. So when using a diffraction grating, there are so many light sources that we're considering. So more than just the two in Young's double slit experiment. There are very sharp maximum and very discrete dark spots between them. The bright spots are where the path difference between all the sources is a perfect multiple integer. However, let's take a look at some area in the dark spots. So if we consider two slits that are emanating waves that are one out of one hundredth of a wavelength different and what this means is that the next consecutive slit is two out of a hundredth different and so on. Going further down the line we'll get to a point of slit that's 50th out of a hundredth wavelength difference then the next one will be 51 out of a hundred. That 50th slit will actually annul or produce destructive interference with the light source from the first slit because the first and the 50th are exactly half a wavelength out of phase. Again, with the 51st and the second slit, they're out of phase. So there's destructive interference that's occurring. So what that means is if you look at any of those dark positions, there will be a slit that's exactly half a wavelength out of phase with it causing that destructive interference, which results in the wide bands of dark spots and the very sharp bright spots in this pattern. When light moves through a grating and diffracts, the amount of diffraction depends on the wavelength of light. White light consists of the spectrum of colors in visible light. And because it consists of all the colors, red through to violet, each of those colors has a different wavelength and diffracts a different amount. So when white light passes through a diffraction grating, the violet wavelength diffracts the least and the red component of that wavelength diffracts the most. And every wavelength between those diffracts different amounts as well. So what you see on the screen is all the colors split up and put next to each other, allowing our eyes to easily identify all the colors rather than just seeing the white light. So in this diagram on the screen, you can see the white light is that central maximum. However, that first order spectrum that we see 
has the violet going through to red due to the fact that the different wavelengths diffract different amounts. So looking at this diagram and using our equation for diffraction, blue or violet, that end of the visible spectrum, has the shortest wavelength, therefore diffracts the least, and red has the longest so it diffracts the most. Now we've got an example here where this area here is the first order spectrum and this is the second order spectrum. In some cases, depending on the geometry that you've got set up, these two spectrum can overlap. So this diagram just breaks it down a little bit more for you to see. And as I was saying before, this area could possibly overlap with this area in some cases. So having a look at the other scenarios for intensity of light when it undergoes diffraction, in a single slit scenario, as seen on this graph here, the central maximum is really bright. First and second order maximum are a lot less intense. Now for a double slit scenario, the central order maximum is bright. The first order maximum is also very bright and then dies down quickly after that. So this graph may be a bit confusing, but let's break it down. Um, the light purple lines just represent the areas of interference where you've got constructive and destructive interference. The blue line is the intensity of the diffraction in the double slit and the red line is the actual result. And you can see in this graph that with a transmission grading where you have a large number of lines in a small space, multiple light sources, that the intensity is almost maximum at each order. Very sharp where there's constructive interference with minimal no light where there's destructive interference. And you can see in this diagram as you go from two slits and continue adding more slits that the areas of constructive interference get sharper and the dark spots of destructive interference get wider. And the intensity as the light moves away from the central maximum also gets duller. Spectroscopy is used to measure different wavelengths of light. Now diffraction gratings are used in these scenarios since the spacing between the slits can be measured very accurately using microscopes. The diffraction grating that is used produces very sharp lines for the maximum uh, with minimal interference or overlap. So the resolving power of diffraction gratings is a lot better compared to prisms. So this is very important when scientists to try to identify the composition of different materials or even stars in the universe. The light that's analyzed needs to be accurately analyzed for the information to be useful. Explain the difference in light intensity between a pattern produced by a double slit compared to a pattern produced with a diffraction gradient.